Where's Charlie? Where's Charlie? Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to work through the books that I talked about in my April TBR, all of my unread Aardvark book club books and all of my unread book of the month books. And I'm going to be reading the first chapter of all of them and trying to decide which ones I actually want to read and which ones I want to give away over on my Patreon. So in this video, I'm going to be reading the first chapter and telling you what I think and then letting you know which one Ones I will hopefully be starting on in April. I started last night with both of these. I read the first chapter of each before I went to bed. I started with Baby X and then I moved on to Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead and I want to chat about these and then we'll start jumping into a few of the others. I made some notes in my Notability app which I've been using quite a bit lately. Um, okay so let's talk about Baby X. The first chapter is in the present day and it was only six pages. So Quinn, who is a non-celebrity, has finally tracked down Thorne, who is a celebrity, and he's at his favorite coffee shop. There's another woman there with him, and Quinn is pregnant and wanting to tell Thorne that the baby is his. Um, he's never seen her before in his life, so he's very confused. And then in chapter two, it starts Ember one year earlier. So that's really all I got. We'll see where it goes from here. But I will say that you could definitely have like the sci-fi moments right off the bat because the lady that he's with, it seems like it's his girlfriend and his like DNA bodyguard. Like he's at this cafe and as soon as he finishes with his drink and they're about to leave, she like cleans the table, cleans his like um, cup that he was drinking out of all of that like right off the bat, even before the waitress like comes to the table. I'm interested to see where the story goes, but I don't think the first chapter was like, super pulling me into the story, if you know what I mean. All right, the next one that I read was Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead, and I actually read the prologue, which was two pages, and then I read the first chapter. So the prologue was only, like I said, two pages. It was um, Dr. Nazari's office seven years earlier, and an accident has happened to our main character, Charlotte Colbert, and she escaped unscathed. She's been called a victim and a survivor in the papers. And Charlotte says that neither of those things are true. So just from the prologue alone, very intrigued. Then I moved on to chapter one, um, which is in the now timeline. And it was also six pages. And it, she works at a newspaper. She's scared of elevators. Her boss is demanding 16 more pages of like imprint and she gets an email from her ex-boyfriend about setting the record straight about something and it's per this other friend, I guess mutual friend named Stephanie um, because she's going to be making a movie out of what happened apparently. So that's all I really know. So I wasn't like initially super intrigued. I really liked the prologue. So I'm definitely more interested in this one than Baby X initially. This one also had this uh, little interview conducted type thing. So yeah, more interested in this one than Baby X just from the very, very beginning. But now let's dive into some of the other books. All right, next up, I'm going to go into Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. Let's see how many pages we start with. Ooh, we have a map and chapter one, the beast from the sea, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canadian Maritimes, January, 1918. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pages. Let's do it. Okay. Very descriptive writing. Definitely not my cup of tea. I might let this one go, but I feel like I need to give it one more chapter because books like this sometimes do start off a little heavy and take a little bit to get into. That's how I felt with Divine Rivals. And I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more and see, but basically in the first chapter, we're following our combat nurse, Laura, and she's been working a lot. So the doctor sends her home. She's talking about the blast that happened in the area. Don't know what happened to her father. Her brother's off in the war, I guess, and her mother died in the blast. Um, and she's like, 
I don't know, it's just like very sad. I don't know, but let me read a little bit more of the second chapter and see if I get a little bit more vibe. I wanted to find a little portion to explain what I mean about the description. The wind cried in broken steeples and sent eddies of blackened snow swirling around her boots. Boats in the icy harbor snubbed their mooring lines. No ship could dock at the burnt piers. The cold crept in off the waters reached dank fingers under her cap and down the collar of her coat a lorry backfired from the opposite curb like do you see how it's like really really setting the scene oh my gosh i just don't know if i'm going to be able to get over the writing it has such good reviews from readers that normally read like historical fantasy and stuff like that but i started chapter two and the first paragraph Blackthorn House stood square on its plot with peeling paint and a sagging roof. In the, supper, in the summer, its shabbiness was windswept and romantic, but now the flower beds gaped bare and the birch by the door quivered naked in the air off the harbor. Like, I just don't know if I can read writing like this. First chapter, three pages, already intrigued, already want to continue. So you have sisters or friends. I don't really know. I think it is sisters. Yes. Okay. It is sisters, but she sees her sister talking to this guy. And then as she's approaching them, like the professor takes off and she asks her sister about him. And she says, oh, you know, that's just like one of my teachers. But you can tell something sinister is about to happen. And now the sister is enrolling in the school because something has happened to her sister. I'm just very intrigued. This is definitely a keeper. All right, I had to change my clothes. It's still the same day. Next up, we're going to try Love Interest by Claire Gilmore. This is an office place romance story. The first chapter is 11 pages. So we're going to go ahead and read that one and see what we think. This is definitely a keeper. I loved the first chapter. I immediately want to keep reading it. This is definitely a keeper. I'm so excited about this. I have no idea where it's going, obviously, but I'm so like giddy about this. This is staying. All right, next on the stack that you're balancing on is Sugar Baby by um, Celine St. Clair. And let's see how long the first chapter is part one on Janus. oh it has like a little prologue and then chapter one emotional damage is one two three four five five pages okay i can totally do that i'll be back finished this one sugar baby not initially intrigued but willing to hang on to it and give it a try um then I jumped into where you end and I actually decided to read the first two chapters because the first chapter was just cat now that's it and then it went into Jude now and um in Cats Now, the night of the accident, we find out that they were running and they jumped in the car and she swerved to miss a deer and they crashed. And then in Jude's Now chapter, hours after the incident, um, Jude is sitting in the hospital waiting room and she's, you know, kind of like telepathically with her twin or whatever. Not really telepathically, but she's just imagining what her twin is going through. And then at the very end, her twin wakes up and, you know, she has this like form of amnesia where she can't really remember her own name, any of her family, any of the details of anything that happened. 
and it says cat has been unmade she thinks and only i can remake her and then it jumps forward cat now eight weeks after the incident and this is all in 1983 so i'm hoping that it has good 80s vibes but yes i am going to continue in this one as well so for now these are both a yes okay next on the stack is the reformatory which i have been told is quite slow for the first half of the book uh, I just randomly had turned to like a different part so I guess it is told in parts um let's see interesting let's see how long the first oh <gasps> this is so sad for Robert Stevens, my great uncle who died at the Dozer School for Boys in Mariana, Florida in 1937, he was 15 years old. Patricia Gloria Stevens Dew, 1939 to um, 2012, I miss you mom. John Dorsey Dew Jr., freedom lawyer, thank you for collaborating with me dad. Oh my goodness. Part 1, McCormick Road. And then we have chapter 1. Let's see how long. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pages. So I'm going to read this and then I will check back in. June 1950, Graystown, Florida. So, so far, he already sees the ghost of his mom. So, I think Robert can see ghosts. Alright, I'm here with a little bit of an update. I read the chapter of the next three books, The Reformatory. I was not feeling it. It was too descriptive, too historical, too like, come on, I need to hit the ground running. And I know this is a slower paced story, but it has an obscenely high average star rating on Goodreads. So I'm tempted to keep it to get the audiobook for and see if that can help me with it. Valley Verified, I want to love because I love this cover, but I couldn't even make it through the first chapter. Um, I couldn't make it through the first chapter of the Reformatory either. And I also could not make it through the first chapter of A Love Song for Ricky Wilde. So um, I tried all those first chapters. I ended up DNFing midway through the first chapter, but I looked them up on Goodreads and 
maybe it's going to take a little bit longer to get into these stories. So I'm willing to hang on to a love song for Ricky Wilde because I saw my friend Jordan's review of it uh, that said that the first half, you know, she really, really loved. It reminded her of one of her favorite books. She loved the music elements to it and all of that. And then the second half is where the magic came into it. Um, but she said it's very different from Seven Days in June, which is good for me because I didn't really like Seven Day Days in June as much as other people did. Um, but she said the characters are just ones you're not going to forget. And I love that. So I'm hanging on to that one. Valley Verified, I feel okay letting go. Um, I know my friend Summer DNF'd this one. And as much as I want to love it, I just don't think this story is for me. So I will be getting rid of this one. And then the reformatory, like I said, I think I just need the audiobook to help me push through some of that description and the slower start to this one. So I'm going to save to ditch one. And now we are, are going to move into reading some more first chapters. Uh, the next first chapter I'm going to read is The Drowning Woman by Robin Harding. And I really hope that I like this one because I know my friend Jordan did. And we usually have similar thoughts on thrillers sometimes most times I don't know but I'm excited to read the first chapter and I will report back once I know what I think but let's see how long the first chapter is oh not very long at all part one Lee we have one two three four four pages the first chapter doesn't tell a lot about the plot of the book but it does set me up with like a really heart pumping scene we have lee who is our homeless woman living in her car and these two guys like smash her windows while she's trying to go to bed at night in her car and grab her backpack and her purse and she's trying to like speed away very scary but yeah so I'm enjoying this one, definitely a keeper. Next, we're gonna move on to the last aardvark book that I need to try, and that is Rabbit Hole by Kate Brody. After we try this one, we're gonna move on to book of the month, so still more chapters to try, but let's see how long this first chapter is. Okay. It looks like it has like this part and then this. It's very, okay. I think I'm gonna read to there. It doesn't necessarily have chapters. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, 11 pages. We're gonna read 11 pages and then I'll come back. 13 pages instead of 11 pages. I do not know why there was so much animal stuff in the very beginning. For starters, her dead sister's dog that she ended up raising from a puppy, it's been like 10 years that she's had this dog, has like cancer and tumors. So they were taking the dog to the vet and it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be long now. So of course that's really hard to read. And then like in the next breath, like, they find, I guess, well, actually on the way to the vet, outside the vet, they see like a hit and run, like bagged up with a note and they tell the vet about it. And they're like, no, we didn't hit it, but like we saw it out in the parking lot type thing. Then we find out about the dog. And then she remembers back to a time when her sister was younger and they found these like two kittens crushed. I'm just like, why? Why would a book start like that? Despite that, <laughs> I'm okay with continuing in this, I think. But if there's any more of that, I've got to let it go. So I'm going to give this one a chance. But I do not know why it started like that. Yuck. 
All right, I am finished reading all of the first chapters for the Aardvark books. I'm about to move on to Book of the Month books, but first I thought I would show you what I have. I think I'm gonna do like ones that I've really enjoyed and I'm really intrigued by, ones that I'm willing to like continue and see how they go, and then ones that I'm going to get rid of. So let me organize them and then I'll show you. Okay, there's only two that I'm getting rid of so far. The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Katherine Arden. It was way too descriptive for me. Historical fiction, fantasy. I knew I was stepping outside of my comfort zone, but I don't think even if I enjoy the story itself that I would enjoy the writing. So I'm gonna let this one go. And then also, Valley Verified, which I was a little hesitant to pick up. I was just really drawn to this cover. Um, I just didn't like how it started. It was also very descriptive, but like more in a contemporary way, like describing what everybody wore and everything like that, which makes sense since she works at this, um, what is it? It's called this, she's a fashion columnist. So of course it's gonna describe the fashion and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just don't, and it almost gave me the ick with like fat shaming a little bit, but not fat shaming so much, but just like digs about bodies that aren't like other bodies. And I was just like, mm. I mean, it wasn't from like the main character's perspective, but it was like from another person's. And that also just kind of gave me the ick. So I'm going to be letting both of these go. And again, this is just based off of the first chapter, which sometimes it takes a while for a book to set itself up to get to the plot. But these are the ones that I thought made about Baby X, which I'm continuing on because it is a sci-fi thriller. And I have heard good things. It has good reviews. I'm willing to see where it goes. Also, Sugar Baby, I'm a sucker for this cover. And I don't know, I just think that the first chapter was setting things up. Also, a love song for Ricky Wilde. Like, I wasn't immediately pulled in. I even quit reading like midway through the first chapter. So that doesn't like bode well, but also the reformatory, another one that I just couldn't, it was, it was descriptive. It was very historical. Um, and I was like, okay, let's get to it. But I did like the fact that our main character could see ghosts. So maybe get spooky, but I also have to realize that this is slow paced. So I think the audiobook would help me get through this one. And then Rabbit Hole by Kate Brody, which at the beginning, her dad commits suicide and or we're guessing it's suicide because he veers off this bridge 10 years to the day when her sister died. And yeah, and then the whole animal thing. So I don't know if there's more of that, I'm out. But so these are the ones I'm kind of feeling mid about. <laughs> And then, based on the first chapter, these are the ones that I'm really excited about. Everyone Who Can Forgive Me is Dead. The Favorites. Love Interest. Where You End. And The Drowning Woman. Which, some of these surprised me that they're like at the top as far as the ones that I'm interested in. But those are the Aardvark books divided up into their little categories. Now we're gonna start book of the month and I'll probably do the same thing. But now I need to start looking for audiobooks too because if I'm hoping to read these, I need to get busy. We're gonna start with The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. It's the follow-up to The Maid, which I should have somewhere here on my shelf. This is my book of the month collection, but let's see how long this first chapter is. Ooh. Okay, we have a prologue. It's only like a page, like a little bit and a little bit, 
And then chapter one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pages. So I'm going to read the prologue in the first chapter and then I'll come back and let you know what I think. Okay, definitely keeping this one and interested. We have her body in the very first chapter um, back with Molly the maid and just her quirky ways and I don't know I just it's also like a quirky writing style it's almost like it's breaking the fourth wall I mean is it breaking the fourth wall but like I like it so I'm keeping this one next up I'm gonna try ready or not um our surprise pregnancy rom-com let's see how many pages our first chapter is all right we have chapter one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven okay let's do this okay i'm gonna put this in the mid pile i'm not immediately pulled into the story our main character goes to her gynecologist and she finds out that she's pregnant she thought she was she took like three at-home tests and all the annoying things when you go to a doctor like when the nurse like has the results but won't tell you because the doctor needs to tell you even though the nurse knows the answer and then they take your blood pressure and weigh you and all of the things just like so annoying but yeah she finds out she's pregnant and she did that appointment on her lunch break and now she's headed back to work so you hear a little bit about her work and what she does and that's basically the first chapter so not initially intriguing but I'll put it in the mid stack. Okay, next up is another one that I'm nervous about. Wayward. We're gonna try it. Let's go. I'm down to the final two books, Listen for the Lie by Amy Tentera, which this is one of the newest book of the month offerings, along with Kill for Me, Kill for You by Steve Cavanaugh. So I'm gonna read both of these first chapters and come back and let you know my thought. This one, the first chapter is about this woman getting fired from her job because she suspected of killing her best friend and also like doing a apology chicken for dinner for her boyfriend um again for being suspected of killing her best friend so i did enjoy this one and then i moved on to kill for me kill for you and we have a woman hunting down this guy about to take him out in the subway when he notices her and is able to alert people around him. I guess she's tried before and she thinks that he killed her husband and daughter or maybe just the daughter because he says at the very end of the first chapter, I didn't kill your daughter. But yeah, she was about to take him out and I think that's why she's going to hire someone to take him out because he keeps spotting her. So intrigued by both of those, those will be going into the yes pile. So I have officially read the first chapter of all of the book of the month ones. I had one in the mid pile, ready or not. And then these four are in the yes pile. So I'm going to go through the mid ones again. And if you have thoughts and feelings, if I'm going to like them, if you think they're going to be my cup of tea, let me know in the comment section down below. The other two, The Warm Hands of Ghost and Valley Verified, I'm definitely getting rid of those. I'm going to actually post those on my Patreon right now. But all of these are a yes, which makes me very, very excited. And this is a mid. So I almost feel like I should just get rid of these <laughs> and let them go. But there's something still intriguing about them to me. So like I said, let me know if you think I should keep them and give them a shot. Ready or Not, Sugar Baby, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, The Reformatory, and Rabbit Hole. Let me know what you think about these. If you've read them or if you've heard things, um, keep it spoiler free, of course, but let me know. I don't like overly descriptive writing. Um, I also like a little bit faster paced story and I like plots over characters, but I don't mind good characters. But yeah, if you have any thoughts about these, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Also, another one. 
that I was feeling mid about was baby X. So yeah, let me know about this one too. Okay, friends, that is a wrap on reading all of the first chapters of my book of the month and aardvark book club books. I'm very excited to dive into the ones that really like pulled me in right away. I posted the giveaway over on my Patreon for in the warm hands of ghosts and valley verified and i also posted a picture of the six books that i was on the fence about so they can weigh in and let me know if they think i will like it but i want you to do that as well in the comment section down below also if you made it this far in the video leave a book stack emoji in the comments and hopefully the next videos that you see are me actually reading the books that i was excited about all right thanks so much for watching. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye friends.